right, so that was Wind Wheels Walk, Mom and Dad. I would like to thank, I believe his name is Andrew Gonzalez, uh, for sending me that. And it is, that song is dope. It reminds me of like, kind of like an old school Blink-182, like when they first started, you know? Um, so, on our show tonight, on this story, and that's the only song we're playing tonight. Okay, so Dale, that way, hey, did you like that song though? I did, actually. That was a good song. Yeah, it, me of- it was a good song. song. Yeah, I knew yeah. you probably like that's why I played it. Okay, so so everyone needs to go and, and download their download their music. When Whales Walked, super cool name. Also, I love that name. Okay. Yeah, by the way, where can I go download that? Yeah, I think they're on iTunes. I think they're on Spotify. I, maybe not though. I'll get I'll get I'll get with uh, I'll get with Andrew and I'll promote them on a promo like on my Facebook page. Because yeah, awesome. I have so many bands sending me things right now that I kind of forget where everything's going like to and from. Because we're growing like super, super fast and crazy. So, uh, yeah. Oh, Charlie, Charlie was just listening to that. She was like, I like that too. Yeah, yeah good, so. good, 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 good. Okay, so you guys are now, you get your check it out because we got 13 minutes left, okay? Yeah. yeah. So, so you, I know 45 minutes goes by fast, yeah. So, yeah. You got, so you go to Albies now, you decide this after they fight over your beer or like they take, that guy Chris takes your beer and, you, you, and Charlotte decide that you do not want to them to know where your car is. So you go across the street to a KFC instead. Yeah, that's right. So, so what happened, right? Like I told you, I, you know, I, I brought the bag, and I was like, you know, I don't want them to kind of like, I, I, you know, you just don't want a couple of drunk people like messing around with like your car, you know, and stuff. I, I didn't want like it to be a scene, and um, you know, I, I really just want kind of like in that whole experience right there uh-huh. so as we're leaving the applebee's right we were walking out of there i, I grabbed charlotte and I'm like hey let's not walk towards the car let's because they followed us they're like oh we're gonna leave too right so they all we all get up and leave at the same time and um <clears throat> i said hey let's walk over to kfc or the qfc actually called qfc it's a supermarket out here in seattle uh-huh. um, i said let's walk over to qfc and um you know we'll just go this way and let them go that way <laughs> right <laughs> And so she's like, okay, that's great. You know, I want to get some airborne anyways because, you know, these people have been, like, touching me. You know, like, you know, <laughs> probably, uh, probably should just go get some of this, like, uh, you know, preventative medicine. I was like, sure, okay, that sounds great. So I'm sitting there, right? I'm watching these guys. And as Dale's walking out with Chris, right, uh-huh. he starts, like, it's like they started, like, wrestling with each other. Like, they're kind of, like, at, at first it's just like they're pushing each other, right? And so I'm, I'm like, Damn, and they're the one. they're the Applebee's. The first time I met Dale, he was getting to a fight with Robert. So that's how right. I met Dale. So, so yeah. that was like in ninth grade, I think. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, no, it's, so they're outside it's, in the Applebee's parking lot, right. looking like so, hobos, right? Looking, they look, 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 look hobos. Right? Just, just hobos, right? In Seattle, we make hobos. Like we know hobos out here in Seattle, right? Right. You do not know hobos until you've been to Seattle or Portland, then you see them everywhere. Okay. They okay. is like homeless. So it was like. Basically, we, I walk over to QFC, and I'm, I'm walking out of the QFC, and I'm standing there, and I said, you know, Char, I didn't bring my mask, right? Like, I left it in the restaurant, uh-huh. so I just stayed in the QFC, and I got these two guys, these uh, two homeless people are actually standing outside of QFC, these two people are, like, begging for money, you know? <laughs> yeah. And they're just quiet. It's another sign, you know, it says, hey, you know, I'm going through hard times, you know? Yeah, and sure. I, like, uh, you know, I'm reaching in my pants looking for some change, and um they, uh, they're just kind of like, I'm looking across, as I'm, as I'm standing outside with these two homeless people, I'm kind of looking outside, looking at Dale and his friends, they're walking across, and it starts to like kind of push each other, then all of a sudden it's like they just start hugging each other, <laughs> like they're hugging, like they're trying to wrestle each other, but they're just, they, they're not really getting either, anything, and no, and no one's going to the ground, they're right, just kind of right, hugging right. each other, and they're wrestling, and I'm just like, and so the, the homeless guy that's at the QFC, right, the, he's, he's, he like asked me, he said, hey, He's like, do you know them? And I, <laughs> I look at him, and I'm kind of reaching my, my pants for some, like, chains, some quarters, you know? And I pull out some quarters, and I'm like, and he said, yes, I know them. Uh, you know, I went to, went to high school with one so, of them. So you got so, the homeless guy judging like, you. Yeah. For being, for being <laughs> friends <laughs> with them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks at me, and he's like, he's like, well... And these guys, and right, Chris and Dale are just like hugging each other in the parking lot, and they Hug, kind of fall on top of Hugging each other. slash wrestling, like who knows yeah, what they're doing? Like, I don't know. Like it, it's it's getting like very like like a love fest here. And so I'm just like watching them. And then he says, the homeless guy turns to me. He says, he says, well, he's like, yeah, those guys really like each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I gave some change, and I'm like, yeah. I was like, yeah. They, they so, so the homeless guy looks at you and says, so those guys really like each other? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we like each other, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, so how, so did they wind up eventually leaving, like, the dude. parking lot? Because I can, I know Dale, he'll sit there and wrestle in the parking lot for, like, an hour. Dude, 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 that's what he's doing. He was, they wrestled for, like, maybe 15 minutes, and I walked around and grabbed the bed. Pulled the bed out and I, I, I went and picked Charlotte up. They didn't and then see. when you're driving outside the parking lot, like driving away, they're just wrestling in the parking lot, like in the middle of the parking lot. They're just wrestling on top of each other, oh like wrestling, fighting each other. And I'm like, dude, I have no idea what's going on there. So I just took off and <laughs> I was just in there. Have you talked um, to Dale since? I did. I texted him like, yes, I texted him like the next day and I said, hey man, I said, how's everything going? He's like, I said, he, I said, what are you up to? And he's like, I'm just working. <laughs> you know, just working? Like, where, where are you getting the Wi-Fi? He's like, yeah, I, oh, like, I got a hot spot on my phone. Oh. Uh, so he's on his way to Michigan with a bunch of bullet holes in his car, and he has Wi-Fi. A bullet in his butt. I'm like, dude, at least take care of the bullet in your butt, you know? Like, you think he feels like he's taking a shit? <laughs> like, he feels the bullet hanging there? Like, I like it. Stuck inside? That's so <laughs> weird. Because, like, I don't think it's a dangerous spot. In your ass yeah. to like get a bullet stuck. Like, there's no like. Is there like any? I mean, you're the you're the scientist. You should know. Is there any like oh, yeah. veins or anything like that? Like in your buttocks area that would uh, make yeah. it impossible to pull out? There is. Well, you got you get a lot of fat and muscle in your glute. So um, you know, it, no. If you went to a doctor, the doctor would pull it out. I don't know if you went to a doctor. See, that's the thing. There's a lot of question marks, right? The mystery of Dale. It's right. like I'm yeah. not really sure. But um, but the thing is, is that the sad thing about Dale, right, is it's just, it's like when I go hang out with him, uh-huh. right, we, we have to go have a drink. And when he has a drink, he that's when he gets like, yeah, he, get, he gets like over and the top. One time he was at my house hanging out in Oklahoma City. And like, it was like 2.33 in the morning. We had to quit drinking already for like an hour because I was already drunk, you know. I was like, I had time to go to sleep, you know. And I'm like, yeah. kids there and stuff. He comes knocking on the door like at 3.30 in the morning. I said, there's any more beer in the house. I was like, no, we drank all the beer. Go to sleep, yeah. dude. Like, yeah. what are you doing? What are you doing? You just woke me up. I got my daughter sleeping in the room. I got my wife in the room. I, you know, my yeah. ex-wife, I'm like, what, what are you doing, dude? Like, stop. Yeah. He just, there's like no filter for, but, but look, Dale, if you hear this, we love you as a friend. We do. We yeah. know you. We as a friend, you dude. are our brother, but we <laughs> like to just, you know, we like to roast when we can, so. Yeah. so. <laughs> and this is too good of a story to pass up. I know. You know what I'm saying? So I know what you, I know what you mean. And the last couple times, like the last time I had him out here, I had him stay at my place. And the thing is, is like, it. it's just, he, he has to get up. You, you know, if he's staying at your place, you ever have a friend that says, hey, man, if I'm staying at your place, can I like, can I get up and go outside like every like, you know, two hours and have a cigarette? It's like, no, no. one side. Once you're over, I lock the doors. Dude, yeah, you know, I, dude, that's a you know what? that's a pet peeve of mine, dude. Like if someone's staying out of my house, once I lock the doors, I don't need you going in and out of my house. Right. Like keep the stay inside, go to sleep because I I hate I literally absolutely hate when people come over and stay the night and then they are in and out all night. Like I'll kick them out. Yeah. I'll lock them the yeah. fuck out of my house, dude. Well, Bye. Well, last time last time Dale came over, man, he went to go have a cigarette and he did, my I live in an apartment complex, right? So it's like when you go out, you have to yard key to get back in. So he <laughs> went out to go have a cigarette and it was like the winter time, right? So it's freezing and cold, right? In Seattle at the time, like it was probably like February, Mar- March or something like that, but it was really cold. And so this guy, he goes outside at like four in the morning to go have a cigarette. And then oh, <laughs> he's man. like, hey, he's like, he can't get back in, so he keeps calling me, calling me, calling me, calling me. And I saw the messages, but I was so tired. I <laughs> dude, was like, you saw him. Like, you goes off. If it's like not my time to wake up, I'm like, I'm, I'm ignoring, right? Unless it's an emergency. Uh, and he was texting me, texting me, and all that stuff. And that guy, like, almost froze to death outside. Oh we had a little like, you know, apartment complex. We had like a clubhouse, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> he was like curled up in one of the clubhouse like little <laughs> benches. And he had like his shirt like wrapped up and all that stuff. Oh. And that was in the morning, and I was like, "Oh shit, Dale's locked outside." Like, what hey, I he, came out. What like, was he doing? Locked outside for like three hours, man. What, what? He, what, what's he doing? At, what's he doing? Waking up at four in the morning to go smoke a cigarette. I, you know what? I don't know, man. That's the thing. It's that's that's Dale. Dale, he he likes to smoke and he likes to drink, 
And it's like you, but but if he doesn't, if you if you're hanging out with him and he doesn't, he's not he's sober, he's not smoking. Dude, yeah, the cool there's like two different Dales almost, right? Yeah, well, it's, just, it's like we we love we love Dale, and uh, he's turning out a little bit like his dad, I think, and he hated his dad. <laughs> like, he's not, he's not, I think so. Yeah. Not, like, he's kinda, but his dad didn't really smoke. His dad didn't, I don't remember him smoking anyways or drinking. But Joe, dude, it's been super fun having you on the show. Hey, Joe, I've known Joe for a very, very, very long time. We were roommates um, when he was going to college at UC Davis. We had all kinds of stories about that we could say, but we're not going to right now. <laughs> but we had some we fun had time. <laughs> Joe and I do uh, do some business stuff together as well, so we're in communications all the time. Uh, he's a great storyteller. That's why I wanted him to do this podcast tonight. Uh, and you got anything else, Joe? Uh, that band when Wells walked is pretty cool. I really wanted to play a couple more, but that story's so interesting. I only got forty five minutes. You know what I'm saying? Hey, what do you think about the podcast? Oh, dude, I love this podcast. Actually, that's that's the thing. I think this is like such a great opportunity for bands to get heard. And I like listening to music. Um, you know, I know you've always been like heart to heart with with punk and rock, and like that's right your whole life. That's like that's really like what you live and breathe. You know, and I'm good at talking. That's all I do. You're good at talking, man. <laughs> but I love I love listening to some of these bands. You know, it's like you, you don't get the, the the bandwidth for some of these bands, and you they don't. they don't. A chance to get heard. No. I mean, like that here tonight, you know. Um, that was that was great. I really enjoyed yeah. that. Do you, that's do what I think about the podcast too. And I do think it's interesting. Some of the people you bring on, you know, some of the characters. Kind yeah. Of interesting too. You know, and we have so, so we range from like death metal to I wouldn't even say I said that band was pop punk at first. I don't really say the pop. I kind of just say like they're they're like like a Blink One Eighty Two punk. Which when Blink One Eighty Two started, they were not pop punk like they turned out to be later on. Yeah. But they have like that punk edge still. But let me play thrash. So, we have, like, we're booked up, dude. Like, this whole month we got all kinds of interviews. So, I'm super excited about that. I'm really excited for, like, every single one of these episodes. And the music ranges from... Eric Bonilla is going to be on here because he has his band Nothing, oh, really? Nothing Short of Tragic, dude. Oh, I saw Eric on Facebook. I, he actually is friends with a friend of mine from Genentech. I didn't know. He's moving, like, to, uh... he's moving to Colorado. Oh, is he? Yep. I, and I think he's going to be here because we're only about seven hours away, I think. Seven Eric. nine hours away. I think he's going to be here on October 25th to do his yeah. band's show. Because he's not uh, a one-man band. He still keeps the name, but it's all just him now. You know, he did, writes all the music for it. And and uh, so that would be very interesting. Uh, he's, he'd be an interesting, interesting guy to interview, too. I mean, he, he, that he's guy's funny. a character. He's funny. He has, he's his, so he, he has his own YouTube channel called On the Couch with Eric Bruns. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I see it, too. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a talent for that. that he's one of the funniest guys The it's yeah. like he doesn't mean to be funny. He actually does mean to be funny. He's got that com- comedic like talent. He where that guy. Me, he sent me an email saying, uh, "Oh, what does email say? Do I have time to say it? I think I do. Let me. Um, you don't want to pause the podcast real quick so I can say what he said to me. Hold on. Okay. I pause this podcast, but we're not live, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. He says, "I meant to send a picture of my penis, but the file was too small. But since we're dicking around anyway, here's a better version of the last song he paid for." <laughs> And then he said, he, he said, I had a threesome the other night, except two people didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> and, then he said, and, then, and then he sent me another song, and then he put, the for labeling that, sending me his one of his songs he put called Big Red, he put one last tickle, one last playful tickle of the balls. So, <laughs> I had a threesome, except two people didn't show up. I mean, that's classic, bro. <laughs> That's classic. That's classic. He is, he, he's an entertaining guy. Like I always like, I would always like enjoy hanging out with Eric I, just because. I can't of wait. How. To, I can't wait to get him on the show. And he actually wrote this outro song for me. That was an intro, now it's an outro. But here's this. Yeah. We gotta go, guys. Thanks for listening to the Last Ball with Sebastian, Joe Angus. Awesome to have you tonight. I'm playing the song. Let's go. Hey, thanks for having me.